Brilliance Audio presents Orders of Battle by Marco Close, performed by Eric G. Dove. The sky above the cemetery is blue, and sunlight is streaming through the red and orange leaves on the trees. Autumn was always her favorite season, so it seems right and fitting that her funeral is today, joining her forever to the place and time she loved most. It's the middle of October, and we had our first frost a week ago. Even though the sun is out, it doesn't have the power anymore to temper the chill of the morning. And I'm glad for my civilian jacket and its high-tech layers of thermal insulation. We stand by the grave and listen to the priest deliver the eulogy. When he says the words of the final prayer, I mouth them with him, even though I don't believe them anymore. But she did, and they gave her comfort when she was in bad places in her life. So I go along because this is for her and not for me. When the priest finishes the ceremony, it's time to say goodbye for good, even though I know the woman we are laying to rest is already gone, reduced to a scoop of ashes in a little stainless steel capsule. We look on as the priest puts the capsule into the cylindrical tube, where it will remain for as long as the next of kin have ledger balances to pay for the yearly maintenance fee. Even a proper grave is a Berber luxury. In the public residence clusters, you get a capsule only if there are relatives who filed a request with the death certificate. Even then, the ashes are disposed of and the capsule recycled after a year to make space for someone else. Out here in Liberty Falls, remembrance has no time limit as long as someone pays the bill every year. This is the measure of a life, I think. A tube in the ground to hold her capsule, and a little polymer plaque to mark the spot. Ten centimeters high and twenty wide. It's a tiny piece of real estate, but it will be hers until I am no longer around. And I know she wouldn't care about what happens to her ashes when nobody is left to remember who she was. But for now, it's there, stark white with golden letters. And the little patch of ground it marks is more than most people with her background get a call their own, in death or before. Phoebe Grayson, it simply says. October 3rd, 2067, to October 13th, 2120. My mother died just ten days after her 53rd birthday. She never got to beat the average, not even the modest one for a welfare citizen. Out in the burbs, the average life expectancy is almost a hundred. In the PRCs, it's 67. We've managed to colonize planets a hundred light years away using starships that harness the energy of their own miniature suns. But we haven't managed to eradicate cancer, because nobody prioritizes funding to fight a disease that mostly afflicts the population of the PRCs. I take some comfort in knowing that Mom would have died half a decade earlier if she hadn't been out here in Liberty Falls, and that she got to spend that extra time in clean air with access to middle-class health care. She lived most of her life on someone else's terms. But the last ten years were hers alone. I'm glad she got to spend them in a place like this. Next to me, Hallie leans her head against my shoulder, and I wrap an arm around her and pull her closer, drawing comfort from her presence. A dozen people have gathered this morning to say their farewells. Chief Kopka is here, along with a handful of friends Mom made in her last decade. I accept their condolences and thank them for coming. You'll still have a place down here when you're on leave, the chief says. Nothing changes as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, I say, for everything you did for her. She earned her keep, the chief replies, several times over. Don't ever think I just took her in as a charity case. She never wanted to have anything handed to her again. I still owe you for taking her on in the first place letting me get her out of the PRC. You don't owe me anything, Chief Kopka says. Not a damn thing. None of us down here can pay back what we owe you. I know a lot of these Berbers make the proper mouth noises when they see someone in a Commonwealth Defense Corps uniform these days. But they don't know what it's like. I damn well do. So I don't want to hear about what you think you owe. All right? All right. I say, but let me be grateful anyway, in her stead. <laughs>